subject of mass m1 equals 9 times the real program is an equal to the while connected to our string constant k equals 100 meters per meter that is fastened to a wall as shown in the picture. A second object m2 equals 7 kilograms is slowly pushed up against m1, impressing the spring by the amount a equals 0.2 meters. The system is then released and both objects are moving to the right on the third single surface. When M1 reaches the equilibrium point, M2 loses contact with M1 and moves to the right with speed V. Determine the value of V. V, how far apart are the objects when the spring is fully stretched for the first time? So, we know the mass of the two objects. We know the spring constant of the spring. We know the um, maximum displacement from equilibrium position initially for the two objects. We know the two objects are going to go move to the right. When it reaches equilibrium position, the two objects are going to uh, start to separate because the spring is only attached to mass 1. Mass 2 is going to continue to move at the velocity it had at that equilibrium position because there is no friction. We're trying to figure out what that velocity is, and we're trying to figure out d, the distance between the two objects. The first time, what does it say? The first time the object mass 1 gets to its maximum ampl or its, its amplitude. Am I correct there? Right. Gets to it. The first time it gets to its amplitude, we're trying to figure out D. It's a great problem. Here we go. Sure, there's a picture in their book. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole series of pictures right there. You're welcome. Uh, thoughts? Jenkins, how do you want to start? It's conservation of, uh, well, uh, until the equilibrium position, it's conservation of the capital. Okay, so what we'll talk about is from the moment when we have both blocks compressed at the amplitude from the equilibrium position until we get to the equilibrium position where the both blocks, oops, I should not draw that. Uh, where we get to the equilibrium position where both blocks are still in contact with one another. This whole time, we have conservation of energy. We'll take this as our initial position, this as our final position. We'll take our zero line at the center of mass of the objects. We have mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. Please walk me through the different types of mechanical energy we have. Uh, look, mechanical energy initial, mechanical energy final. Oh, so we have oh, velocity. One half k x initial squared. Um, What's the initial velocity? Zero. The initial height? Zero. Okay. So we're done with the initial. What about final? Um, what is it? This. We've got um, kinetic energy. Because we have some sort of velocity. And. Uh, height? Zero. Uh, and x? Zero. So that's it. So we have 1 half kx initial squared equals 1 half mv final squared. So we get ka squared equals mv final squared. And the v final squared then is equal to ka squared divided by m, or the velocity is equal to the square root of ka squared divided by m. What mass are we talking about, Catherine, in that equation? Um, the mass of both of them. I'm sorry, mass of? Um, both of them. Both of them. Because notice, this right here is the kinetic energy total, so it's going to be the mass total. So we have the spring constant is 100 times the amplitude, which was 0 0.2, which we're going to square, divided by the mass, which is going to be the 9 plus the 7. This is the total mass. The square root of, the velocity final. 0.5. Say again? 0.5. 0.5. Works out to be exact 0.5? Probably, but you know. Yay. Okay, so we have the velocity of block two as it's moving to the right. Our goal now is to figure out the distance between block one and block two at the moment block one first gets to its maximum displacement from the equilibrium position or its amplitude. Thoughts? So. Well, for the block that's not connected, we can just do UAM with 
Uh, but we're going to figure out at what time the spring block will have reached its. What am I going to do with you, AM? Cross it off. Gonna cross it off. <laughs> for the second block. Oh, for the second block. I thought you said the first block. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess the first one will have to figure out. I'm, I'm sorry. If we're talking about the second block, we're still not talking really about uh, UAM, though. I mean, I guess we are uniformly accelerated motion with an acceleration of yeah. zero. Okay. So we could, for the second block, we know for, let's just do this, for the second block, we know the velocity in the x direction equals delta x over delta t. So once we know, we know the velocity, once we know delta t, we can figure out delta x. Okay. So, so we we'll have to figure out when it gets to its... So what we need to figure out is when block one gets to its amplitude for the first time. Jake? We can find this uh, final uh, uh, amplitude. Okay, we can find its amplitude. By uh, using conservation of mechanical energy again, where the initial point is the final point of the last storm. And the final point would be when it stops moving. Notice the amplitude changes now, right? Because the mass of the object has changed. So we need to figure out what the new amplitude is. So what we're saying is we now have, just looking at the one block at its, e at its equilibrium position, that's going to be our initial point. Our final point is going to be where it ends over here at whatever amplitude it has. So this is our final point. So again, we have now for the first block, we have mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. And notice this time it's just the reverse. The initial energy is one half mass times velocity initial squared, which is equal to one half kx final squared. We know the initial velocity. It was what we were given, what we just found. Uh, and we're looking for x final, which is the amplitude. So mv squared. Uh, so the amplitude equals mv squared divided by k, the square root of. The amplitude is the mass. Now notice, again, this is block one, so this is going to be the mass of block one, which was 9 multiplied by the velocity, which we just got to be 0.5. That's squared divided by the spring constant, which was 100, the square root of the amplitude. 0 0.15 meters. 0.15 meters. So notice we've confirmed that the amplitude is different. It is only moved over 0.5 meters. So now we know that, uh, let's just draw a picture up here, that at this particular point, mass 1 is going to be 0.15 meters from the equilibrium position and we need to figure out where block 2 is relative to the equilibrium position so that we can figure out what d is the distance between the two blocks. In order to figure out how far 2 has gone we need to know when block 1 gets to its maximum displacement from equilibrium position. How are we going to figure out when block one gets to its maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. John. Um, using uh, we use x of t plus a plus a. Okay. We've got this giant equation, the position as a function of time equals a times a cosine of omega t plus phi. Uh, we probably could go through and use that. Uh, we know the amplitude. Um, we know omega, because we know mass and k, and we probably even know phi at this point. Uh, it's probably not the way that I would approach it, but you could certainly do it that way. What's another way we could go through and do this? Pound it off. Couldn't you just use omega and it's uh, like change the theta over change the time? Ah, but see, that the, that's the angular frequency, was not, which is not actually, that, that, actually a change in theta in this particular case. It's the angular frequency. Define the period. It would be a fourth of that. It would be one fourth of the period. So the change in time is going to be the period divided by 4. If you look at it in terms of our sine cosine wave, the object is going something like 
this. And we're talking about the time it takes to go from position two to position one, which is one fourth of the period. John, I do want to reiterate that you could go through and do it this way, but I think this way is just a little bit easier. So the period we already figured out was equal to, what was it, uh, 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Is that correct? So confirm for me. It's from my brain. So we have then, and this is a 4. So the delta t is going to be equal to pi over 2 multiplied by the square root of the mass, which is 9 divided. And again, this is just mass 1 because this is just the period of mass 1 divided by the spring constant, which is 100. So the change in time is equal to 0 0.4712. 0.4712 seconds. OK, what do we do with that time, Mr. Miller? Our goal in the end is to solve for d. We can't use that time directly to solve for d, but we can find something first. Uh, we can find the distance that the second block is on. How do we figure out delta x2? Um, velocity equals delta x over delta t. So delta x for block 2 is just going to be the velocity of block 2 multiplied by the, the delta t, which we just found. So the velocity of block 2, I believe, was the 0.5 multiplied by our delta t, which is 0.4712 seconds. Delta x, the displacement for block 2. 0 0.2356. 0 0.2356 meters. Therefore, d is equal to. How do we figure out d? Um, Delta x2, we subtract the amplitude from it. Well, the amplitude for just block one, which we figured out right here. So 0 0.2356 minus 0 0.15. 0 0.0856. 0 0.0856 meters. 